All right, everybody, welcome once more to another webcast of Monica Home Christian Porn Star Edition. My name is Alexandra Mayers, but I am better known, formerly known, as Monica Foster, still sometimes known as Monica Foster from my Twitter account, twitter.com forward slash Monica Foster, my multitude of websites, primarily uh, monicaathome.com, my hub for everything, mindofmonica.com, and of course my official website, monicaf.com. Now if you're not familiar with what Christian Porn Star is, I do invite you to visit the website that I put together for it, which is www.christianpornstar.com. Um, so lots happened this week. A lot has gone on this week. Um, I suppose that we'll begin this webcast by kind of going over what's going on in the world. Now first and foremost, I am very, 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 very happy that President Barack Obama has been re-elected for a second term. Woo! Very happy about this. Now, I do know there's a lot of people out there who are not as happy as I am, okay? And I'm sorry if you're unhappy, but have faith. And if you don't want to have faith in Barack Obama, have faith in God and Jesus Christ. Because um, people on both sides of the issue have been saying that this is in God's hands, this particular election. And I believe it was, and I believe that God selected through us, the people of the United States of, of America, the proper candidate. Okay? Again, I am sorry if your candidate lost, but to those of you out there who think along the same lines that I do, I'm sure you're doing the happy dance as well. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about today. Um, the second thing that I'd like to discuss, and this goes into adult entertainment industry news, which is what Monica at Home initially um, covered, you know, just. I started this webcast in my little apartment back in Hollywood, California when I was living there. And since I've made my exodus, I have continued and I've, you know, branched off onto my Christian porn star. But I kind of throw everything in there nowadays because I only really want to do one webcast a week. But anyway, I also want to send a big congratulations to the AIDS Healthcare Foundation because through all of their hard work and effort, they managed to get Measure B ballot measure B, which is a ballot measure that um, makes it mandatory for adult studios to utilize condoms and other barrier protection on a consistent basis. They got measure B passed into law. The people of Los Angeles spoke and they voted it in. Very happy about that. Congratulations to Michael Weinstein and all of the staff at the AIDS Healthcare Foundation. Um, congratulations to everyone who, like myself, tried to get the word out about that. Um, you know, I said in, I think, my previous Christian Porn Star webcast that it's not who speaks the loudest when it comes to what's right and what's wrong. It's the person who I think has, um, or the group of people who has the best interest of the collective in mind. So that was uh, that was a really cool um, thing to work on and uh, witness coming into fruition. I believe that, again, even though there are some people who countered that particular bat ballot measure who may not understand why it was so important, there are so many lives that will be saved. There are so many people who won't leave the adult entertainment industry with something that they cannot get rid of. And um, just very happy about that. Very happy about that. So um, if you guys want to follow along with me and go over to my adult entertainment industry news blog, which is www.pornnewstoday.com, we can look at some other adult entertainment industry news that's current at the moment from this past week. Um, well, one of the things that I wanted to touch on um, which I think is very strange, and I can't wait to see what happens with this, is um, the linkage between a porn star by the name of Jesse Andrews 
and a very popular pop star and daughter of a um, very popular country music musician. Her name is Miley Cyrus. I believe she's the daughter of Billy Ray Cyrus. Um, you know, this isn't the first time that this has happened. Now this girl, Jessie Andrews, I, I saw the music video that Miley Cyrus did in collaboration with a uh, DJ, I think his name is Borgor, sounds like Booger. Any, <laughs> anyways, uh, this girl Jessie Andrews was barely in the music video, but for some reason this is propelling her into mainstream. Um, the downside about this is that, there, you know, as her career is legitimizing and going into mainstream and essentially on an incline, Unfortunately, Miley Cyrus's reputation and um, career is on a decline because she was known as, um, I believe, Disney's Hannah Montana for years. You know, she has a gi giant fan base of young women, young girls who love her as Hannah Montana. But now all these fans of hers, male and female, are witnessing her um, having an association with adult entertainment, which is one of the most dangerous industries and situations that you can go to go into. If you want to know the truth about that, you can always um, visit my official blog, which is all free to read, which is monicfoster.blogspot.com, or you can just read through pornewstoday.com. You could get my book, perfectforporn.com, and that's available on amazon.com right now. I'll read to you guys a little bit of that. I mean, by the time I'm done with these webcasts, You'll probably have the entire book and you won't have to, have to buy it or anything. But um, if anyone who out there is young watching me considering going into porn, you know I get the emails because I do have the website gettingintoporn.com which I have altered to say, big mistake, don't do it. Don't do it. Please don't do it. And later in this broadcast I'll go into ex exactly why. If you follow my Twitter, you'll see that is just not a good idea. Um, but anyway, Miley Cyrus is basically saying to a lot of young women out there by um, having this Jesse Andrews in her music video, hey, go into porn, allow yourself to be abused, used, exploited, have your soul basically held at ransom. And, you know, if you do that long enough, just maybe you'll get to have some mainstream attention on TMZ and the E! Channel by um, doing a little walk-on role on a music video of someone along the same lines of fame that I have. That's what Miley Cyrus is saying. That's not a good thing for you to do, Miley Cyrus. Very irresponsible. I don't believe you were thinking clearly. Maybe you didn't even know what the whole situation was. But um, what I, what I also find interesting about this particular situation is that this particular porn star is a Spiegler girl. Now, Mark Spiegler is somebody who um, has systematically had several of the women that he's represented within the adult entertainment industry pop up in mainstream entertainment and very rapidly, very quickly too. It's it's interesting. Sasha Gray was one. Now we got Jesse Andrews. Slowly but surely, um, I see a girl by the name of Skin Diamond making headway. Um, who else? Brooklyn Lee. She was the chick who uh, took the scandalous photograph with our ex-president, Bill Clinton. So there's something funny going on here. Um, this will be a subject that I touch on with a new webcast that I will be starting. I keep pushing it back, but I gotta get to it at some point. It will be called Time to Take Notice, timetotakenotice.com, to where I talk about some things that might be considered conspiracies, but I think I have the proof. So that'll be something else I touch on at some point. Anyway, is there anything else that happened this week that I want to talk about that's on Porn News today? Um, well, I did post a news item that I spotted on um, a website called 
Twitchy.com. I guess they monitor celebrities um, or people of notes Twitter accounts and see what they're up to and they repost stuff that is going on with them. Anyway, um, Jenna Jameson, being that we're on the subject of porn, let's go ahead and talk about that. Now, evidently, Jenna Jameson was a Mitt Romney supporter, which I find strange, but not too strange, being that um, there's a lot of people in the porn industry who, for some reason, are open Republicans, and adamantly so, supporters of the Republican Party. Um, there are a lot of behind-the-scenes reasons why I do see why that is. A lot of it has to do with the illegal prostitution and escorting, of which is the foundation of the Los Angeles porn industry. Um, but anyway, Jenna Jameson, after the election, went off saying, oh, you know, can't believe Obama was re-elected. Oh, I guess everyone's going to still blame everything on Bush and blah, 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 blah. So a lot of the people who follow her, they went to town. And they were pretty upset about it. But, you know, I put my little commentary on poor news today in regards to Jenna Jameson's um, support of Mitt Romney. And I know a lot of people are going to be upset with me. But nowadays I can't help but be honest. I just, you know, the veil of everything I think in our world is being lifted, being that we are in 2012 at the moment. So, uh, you know, I called her white trash. I did. A lot of people call me a nigger, so I called her white trash. I call a lot of people white trash. Is it wrong for me to say that? Yes. Yes, it is racist. It is um, prejudice, I suppose, to use that term. But sometimes if the shoe fits, wear it. I'm not saying that you cannot elevate yourself from a certain societal label. Everybody has the power within themselves to do it. But societal labels do exist and within the Los Angeles porn industry, I believe that there are there is a lot of white trash and I believe that there are a lot of niggers also. Yes, I do. Um, my whole point to bringing up these racial labels and my whole point to me even bringing up that every once in a while I do make the mistake of utilizing them is because sometimes we have to think before we do affiliate ourselves with certain groups, political parties, and um, teams even. I personally don't think that anybody who is even remotely affiliated to the adult entertainment industry needs to or should associate themselves with the Republican Party. Now, I want nothing to do with the Los Angeles porn industry, but I consider myself a very devout Democrat at this stage. And part of my rationalization for that is the following. I think that Barack Obama would gladly sit down at a dinner table to discuss certain issues with Jenna Jameson, Larry Flint, um, Shelley Lubin, Desi Fox, Steve Hirsch, and quite a few other people. And I believe he would even do so publicly. The reason I believe that is because he had no problem having Lindsay Lohan and Kim Kardashian over to the White House. Not too long ago. Publicly. Do I believe Mitt Romney would ever do the same? No. Not at all. So that's my reasoning behind that. But now let's take a break before I go any further and see what you guys are saying in the chat room. Let's see. Yes, I did use the N-word. I use a lot of words. You should see some of the domains I own. I'm a different kind of person. That's for sure. But I am still a Christian. When it comes to the anti-porn cause, which unfortunately I cannot completely affiliate myself with, I'm not pro-porn, I'm not anti-porn, I'm just Alexandra Mayers. 
But if you are someone who is completely anti-porn, I do recommend that you visit a website, a family of websites, that all stems from pornintheValley.com. The woman who put that together is a woman by the name of Diana Graham Mason, formerly known as Desi Fox. This will probably be the last webcast I mention her. Um, she and I, long time association and friendship, but at this point in time, and I've said this before, but at this point in time, it's permanent. We are no longer friends. She will always be someone I looked in the past at as a very in person, a person who was very instrumental in my becoming the woman that sits here speaking to you today. And I'll leave it at that. But I do encourage many of you to follow her on, t her on Twitter, to visit her websites, and um, learn her perspective. Definitely learn her perspective because it is a perspective that I feel many people in the world need to be aware of. There are many things that she has to say that are things that are vital for us as a society to be aware of and to learn. So please do take the time to visit pornintheValley.com. Um, while I'm talking about anti-porn people, I'll also say today, please take the time to visit um, the Pink Cross website and to follow Shelly Lubin on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash S Lubin. And by the way, Desi Fox was twitter.com forward slash Desi Fox, spelled with two X's. Uh, follow both of those women. Both of those women have been with me on my journey since my exodus from porn. I believe both women know me pretty well. Shirley Lubin, definitely not as well as Desi Fox, but everyone out there watching me, follow their Twitters. Get to know them. Watch them closely. Now that brings me to um, a bit of a personal and spiritual matter of which I've had to make a very risky choice in doing over the past couple of days. Now if you follow my Twitter, which is twitter.com forward slash Monica Foster, you will notice that I've been tweeting very rapidly over the past few days. And I have been stating some very harsh realities in regards to things that I went through within the Los Angeles porn industry and people that I encountered within the Los Angeles porn industry who would probably rather not me talk about them, not have me talk about them. But I'm doing so for a reason. And my reason is so that everyone out there watching me can be very aware that I'm pretty much in danger. Whether it be danger of losing my freedom or losing my life or maybe both, I am not certain. But I have taken a leap of faith and I decided to post my physical address on Twitter. And I had to do that because what I've come to realize is that hiding is pointless from people who have been stalking, harassing, and terrorizing me for the past couple of years. Um, Hiding is pointless. Dropping off the radar is pointless. I can't help but share what I know because I've got to keep other men and women from 
working and dealing with the people I've dealt with. I have a personal and spiritual responsibility to not let that happen to certain people. I have to share the knowledge. I have to share my experiences. I have to. I feel like I have an obligation from God to do this. But, um, you know, I've tried to safeguard my address. I've tried to safeguard my life. I've tried and I've tried and I've tried and I've come to the conclusion that the best way for me to stay safe is in plain sight. So that's what I'm doing. Now, I think the main issue that I'm encountering is that I am a talker and I am a communicator and I'm very good at it. I'm also brutally honest. And I have built some websites and some databases that have not been created before. And there's a lot of people who want those websites taken offline. And who knows, one day they might be. But um, what I'm saying today, what I've said on my Twitter over the past couple of days, is anyone who has issue with me, you now have my physical address. You can make an appointment, and if I choose to meet with you, you can come on by. And you can explain to me, to my face, what issue you have. If that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. Now, that also brings me to the topic of two of the primary people who claim to be after me, whether it be to physically harm me or to try to get me into a court of law. Not certain, possibly both. We'll see, time will tell. Those two people, their names are Ari Bass, who is better known as Michael Whitaker within the adult film industry in Los Angeles, and another person who on Twitter goes by the name TRPWL, who I've been led to believe his real name is Sean Tompkins. Now, both of these people are public figures, so I can openly discuss them. In fact, I encourage everyone out there watching me, whether it be live or as an archive, to follow these people on Twitter. Follow them. Watch them closely. Tweet them, maybe. Engage them in discussion, debate, whatever. I am openly giving everyone out there who I believe has, ha have, has had reason to either take away my freedom, take away my life, or simply silence me. I'm giving all of them my Twitter followers. Because if they are correct in their actions, I want everybody out there in the world who is aware of my situation to see that they are correct, if they are. Now, in regards to um, Ari Bass and Sean Tompkins, since I have lived out here in Las Vegas, they have claimed to need my address to serve me with legal documentation. As of current, according to my Twitter followers, I have 13,000 something followers. Let's say that only half of those followers are actual people. That means 7,500 people out there on this planet now have my physical address. So Ari, Sean, if you need to serve me with legal paperwork, you now can do so. Ask any of my followers for my address. Yeah. Now, here's the issue with getting me into a court of law. And this all goes back to porn wiki leaks which I have documented to the best of my ability on pornwikileaks.blogspot.com. People were not very truthful about that situation and what was going on and who was behind what, who was saying what. I know for a fact that many of the 
suppose it post that I made I never made yeah form WikiLeaks also opens the door to the aim healthcare database being breached and thousands of adult performers maybe hundreds but I think it was around a thousand adult performers personal info being posted online Putting me in a court of law also opens the door to how in the world was the AIDS Healthcare Foundation's email system breached? And why is it that Sean Tompkins has seen these emails? He just put up a post the other day about it. I screen capped that, of course. Also in regards to Sean Tompkins, now he has a personal vendetta with me. Because before I became aware of the type of person he is, and before I knew that he was instrumental in the stalking, harassment, and terrorization, not just of myself, but my family members as well, I witnessed what I perceive to be child neglect, which worried me and prompted me to contact a state office to make a report. He claims that I made a false report. No, I had just cause. So we'll talk about that a little bit today, too. When it comes to the, to the topic of Sean Tomp Tompkins, I also have to bring up the subject matter of porn addiction. I believe that there's many people out there who are porn addicts. They might not realize it. My final post on porn news today actually for this weekend has to do with porn addiction. Wonderful news story that was posted, that I reposted from um, a United Kingdom website called um, The Sun. When it comes to Sean Tompkins, there were times that he texted me via phone very inappropriate images along with images of his children. Not in the same text, but still, why would you send images of your children to a porn star or ex-porn star? Still am a webcam girl, so I still technically am an adult performer. Why would you do that, being that you've never met me? That's child endangerment from my perspective. Why would you have a public Twitter account where one day you post nude photos of somebody, a porn star or whoever, and then the next day on that same Twitter account where you're also posting links to pornography, links to websites that have pornography, why would you expose your children's identities? Why? Do I believe that's child endangerment? Absolutely. Am I willing to step in a court of law and present my evidence to that? Show the screen caps? express my thoughts and feelings on that? Absolutely. Yes. I think anybody out there should. Because I believe that sometimes porn addiction can make you so sick in the mind, and I mean mentally ill, that you do not know right from wrong. Porn is a psychological drug. And I know that all too well. Because not only have I been the psychological drug of choice for many people, but I've been the dealer. So I'll leave it at that. Well, is there anything else I really want to talk about? Um, no, not really. Not really. I guess I'll conclude with um, 
Well, I like to read from my book of songs, so I'll do that. I think I'll also read maybe something from a few, you know, a few things. I guess I'll start with um, God's Little Instruction Book, number two. My dad gave me this. So, let's see. I guess, well, I opened immediately to page seven, and this is a good little, um, little thought. Choice, not chance, determines human destiny. I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. That's from Deuteronomy 3019. And that's a good thing for me to read aloud today, not just to y'all, but to myself. Because I had to make some pretty um, heavy choices, really, over the past couple of years. Very risky choices, but they've been my choices. And I do believe in free will. Um, Part of the reason I continue being as verbal as I am is because I do believe that certain people who would love for me to just shut up are trying to circumvent my free will, and that's wrong. There have also been people who have overly attempted to coax me, though, into making certain choices, some of which I consciously have, but some of the choices that they've tried to get me to make, I've refused to make, and to me, that's the same thing trying to circumvent free will. As of current, I'm choosing to the best of my ability to be happy and to enjoy my life. And I like that choice a lot. Um, but what's interesting to me when I really think about the entire picture is that God already knows what I'm going to do. He gives me the power to make these choices, but he already knows what I'm going to do. So really when I think about that element, it really takes a lot of weight off my shoulders. It really helps me relax a bit because all of this is in God's hands. And I find a level of peace within that. So that was something I wanted to discuss today. Um, for my book of Psalms, let's see, what theme do I want to read about? In danger or threatened. So I'll go to uh, Mark 4.37 in regards to that. fierce gale of wind and the waves were breaking over the boat so much that the boat was already filling up. Jesus himself was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush, be still. And the wind died down and it became perfectly calm. And he said to them, why are you afraid? How is it you have no faith? They became very much afraid and said to one another, who then is this that even in the wind and the sea obey him? <clears throat> this is actually a passage that was brought up into um, the ladies meeting that Annie who runs hookers for Jesus uh, Post weekly. We're reading a book called Battlefield of the Mind, and that particular passage refers to when Jesus was on the sea, you know, with his friends, associates, acquaintances, and whatnot. And uh, even though there's all this wind around them, he wasn't afraid because he had faith in his Father, which is God. And God is all of our fathers, just like, you know. In my view, we're all related to Jesus. 
I've said this in many webcasts, but I feel like Jesus is sitting here with me right now, because he is. And um, as I stated earlier in the webcast, and I'll close with this, I don't think I have enough faith and I think that a lot of what I'm going through is because God has realized that I need to build my faith much higher. Because I do. And that's why I'm taking certain leaps of faith. Um, is there anything else I wanted to cover today? Oh, there is one more thing. One more thing. This again goes back to my primary, um, I'll call him super fan stalker, Sean Tompkins. He's decided to state that somehow, and I don't know how this would be because I am pretty sure he's not a porn producer, but he could be, I don't know. He claims that he has my final AIM STD test and that that STD test states that I am HIV positive. Now that is false. However, if this man wants to continue to slander me by saying this, then unfortunately he incriminates the people who I was with prior and shortly after to taking that HIV test. He also incriminates AIM because if my last AIM test said that I was HIV positive, then that would mean that my final scene that I shot, which was for Lexington Steel Studio, that would mean that he knowingly shot with someone who's HIV positive, and that's not the case. Because he was my final scene. And he and another porn star by the name of Tina Tyler saw my paperwork. And I'm sure that they verified it on the AIM database as well. That would also mean that the person I was dating at the time would have contracted HIV from me if it were true that I'm HIV positive, of which it's not. You know, that's what I've been dealing with. And it's hurtful, you know. I had Lexington Steel tweet me today, say, keep my name out of it. Well, I'm sorry, dude, but I can't keep your name out of it when the people that you are associating with are trying to ruin and slander my reputation. You know, and not just mine, but this same person, Sean Tompkins. And I got the tweets to prove it. I'll put it on this broadcast, this webcast, when I repost it. Posting my father's name. Saying that my father is a prostitute. Saying that my father has HIV. Really? Using his real name on Twitter? Really, dude? So to all the people out there working in the Los Angeles porn industry who are like, oh, why is Monica Foster or Alexandra Mayers going crazy on Twitter? Well, you know, I'd rather be perceived as crazy than to actually be crazy. And any Los Angeles porn industry professional who is associating with this Ari Bass or Sean Tompkins or Diane Duke or anyone within that free speech coalition who is not just supporting but enabling and funding these attacks upon me and others who have chosen to speak the truth, all of you are crazy for doing so. And again, if you have something to say to me, now you got my address. So thank you for watching this broadcast of Christian Porn Star, which is an offshoot of Monica at Home. You can watch all the archives of my show on www.monicaathome.com or on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Monica at Home and uh, various other places that my videos are consistently being reposted along with all of my other work. Have a great week. And may Jesus Christ enter your life in a profound way.